So, in a live stream talking about element 115, I got cut off. And what I was suggesting is that element 115 is right on the edge of stability. So, for example, if you changed how fast time flowed in an area, it might be stable. It might be the perfect fuel for a ship that if somebody steals it, they can't figure out how to make fuel for it. Which I thought would be a clever thing for some sort of scout ship. The reason I say the time field can be altered and potentially stick is going to be this little machine we're looking at here. I've done other videos on it. It's a uh, 50 galvanized steel segments. It's a Wimhurst machine that I modified. I pulled off the collection coils um, and pulled off half of the shorting bars. So it's only got one shorting bar on each side. The field flipped back and forth about once a second when it was running and um, did some odd things. One of them would be um, I made things like multimeter leads, superconductors. I didn't do it to the larger coil, um, this coil here, and I think, because that was also inside the field, and I think that was because I was pushing a lot of current through it. Pushing current through it seems to break the effect, but the multimeter leads, they went to zero, and then they faded back up to where they were at 0.6 or 0.7, over a period of about four or five years, which I thought was interesting. Okay, it's a data point, but maybe doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, anyway, now to the detectors. This is, um, I put two clock chips on either side of this board. They run at 20 megahertz. They go back to a comparator and then into the LED. When I first put it together, that LED flashed about twice a second. So I figured it would be really sensitive and I'd be able to tell what it's doing, which I could until I got it around a rotating magnetic field, not even much of one. And um, LED started flashing so fast I couldn't tell. And it did that for, I don't know, months or a year, but it eventually faded back to where now it flashes about the same speed as it used to after quite a few years. And I would plug it in and show you, but my batteries are dead. Um, anyway, time field detector, looking for uh, the difference there, and um, it taught me that time fields are sticky. When you start altering the flow of time, it can, uh, well, it can last a while. Uh, just like with this machine, I'd put a clock in it, uh, like a little pocket watch, and it didn't matter if it was mechanical or digital, did the exact same thing. Uh, it would tick off time kind of randomly within... A second or two um, when the machine was on. When you shut it off, it, it pretty much went back to normal, except the multimeter leads. They, they took a long time. Anyway, and as far as the detectors, here's another one of my detectors, how I mapped out the field of this machine. Um, and it was meant as a magnetic permeability detector. So it's a um, 34 gauge wire in there. It's 198 and a half ohms of 34 gauge wire wrapped up. It's got a 555 timer circuit set up on, I believe, 50% duty cycle, and it doesn't flash very often. It's about, what is that, a little more than once a second. And if you put a steel rod in there, you can see it's brighter than without it. That's the whole point. Um, so the back EMF from the pulse is sent into that LED. And that's literally all this thing does. It's not very advanced, but it did let me map out the field from this thing. Um, anyway, and by the way, the field from this thing looked like uh, two toruses squished down into the shape of a sphere. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything else. Oh, read the book, um, The New Science by Wilbert Smith. It, that's the first place I saw somebody else talk about the uh, time fields and how they can be manipulated. And yeah, I guess that's about it. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, okay, bye.